Another Olympics, another doping scandal. This one out of China. China? It turns out that 23 Chinese swimmers prior to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics tested positive for a prohibited substance, but were secretly cleared to participate anyway. Some went on to win gold medals, and we're only finding out about it now because of an April 20th, 2024 report from the New York Times, nearly three years after the event. The substance in question, trimazidid Trimetazanidine, Trimetazanidine Zidane, TMZ. According to WebMD, TMZ helps metabolize fatty acids, which helps your body use oxygen. The drug allows for more blood flow to your heart and limits quick changes in your blood pressure. This is obviously beneficial for athletic performance, and it's banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency, known as WADA, which oversees Olympic athletes. In WADA's policies, TMZ is banned as a hormone and metabolic modulator. Now, we've seen bans issued by WADA because of TMZ use in the past. For example, at the 2022 Winter Olympics, Russian star figure skater Kamila Veliva, I don't know if that's how you say her name, had her gold medal stripped and was banned for four years. In 2018, a Russian bobsledder was also disqualified for TMZ use, and in 2014, a gold medalist Chinese swimmer, Sun Yang, tested positive and was suspended. So what exactly happened here? It turns out that China's anti-doping agency reported that some of their swimmers were exposed to trace amounts of the substance inadvertently. It's funny how that always seems to happen to athletes. Anyway, WADA accepted these findings, but a key piece of the controversy here other than the fact that they seemingly swept it under the rug, is that they did not perform their usual on-the-ground investigation because of COVID. On their website, they stated they were not in a position to disprove the contamination theory, so they chose not to intervene. To be honest, this is why people don't take the Olympics seriously. You have WADA, the world's leading anti-doping agency, responsible for effectively drug testing the Olympics, throwing up their hands saying, oh, looks like there's nothing we can do here. Two dozen of your athletes just happen to have this synthetic drug in their system. What a coincidence. And you know, during COVID, when everything is decontaminated religiously, oh well, go ahead and compete. On top of that, the Chinese swim team is no stranger to doping controversies. Between 1990 and 1998, 28 Chinese swimmers tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. You also have to wonder if they felt emboldened after the 2019 ruling during that Russian doping scandal where essentially the country was sponsoring drug use among their athletes. They were lying about test results, and then they only got a four-year ban. And during that, WADA was just like, well, um, your athletes can still compete, just not under the Russian flag. Great job, WADA. This does make me wonder what else happened during that COVID Olympics that we'll just never find out about. It's just ridiculous. But perhaps the juiciest bit out of this whole fiasco is how WADA has responded since the report came out. Their first public statement on their website, they come out and threaten the head of the U.S. anti-doping agency who criticized WADA. The World Anti-Doping Agency is astonished by the outrageous, completely false and defamatory remarks made by the CEO of the United States anti-doping agency, Travis Tiger, who has made very serious accusations against WADA in connection with the case of 23 swimmers from China that was reported upon by the media earlier today. Then this long statement ends in big bold letters. It should be noted that following Mr. Tigert's false allegations, WADA has no choice but to refer this matter to its legal counsel for further action. <laughs> and then literally the next day, in their next story on their website, after admitting they did not complete a thorough investigation, they basically threatened to sue anybody reporting on it. They go after that big long spiel about, oh, we can't do anything in big bold letters following the misleading information that has been published this week, including on social media, water reserves its right to take legal action as appropriate. Like, come on, you guys, you sound like a teenager threatening to run away from home. I'll do it. You'll see. <laughs> Grow up, you guys. But yeah, so now we're in day three. As more reports kept coming out, WADA starts to get serious. And they decide to hold an actual press conference and try to explain the situation and open themselves up to media inquiries, you know, at, like, like a professional organization should have done from the beginning. But what might be my favorite part about this whole thing is that the day before the story broke, so on April 19th, on WADA's website, they posted that they were celebrating the anti-doping community raising awareness of the importance of clean sport. You can't write it any better than that. And all I got to say is, what are you doing? <laughs> like I said, 
This is why people don't take the Olympics as seriously as they used to in the past. You got people like this in charge. It's just such a joke. Get your act together, guys.